irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to L.A. Talk Radio. You're listening to What Women Want with Judy Goss and Kristen West, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us at What Women Talk Radio for our show tonight, The Talk Around Pot. We are coming into our fourth year now, and this spring we've reached one million downloads between latalkradio.com's archives, iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube now. We have over 60 shows uploaded on there on YouTube. You can find us everywhere. So we're actively seeking sponsors for our show. If we are everywhere, then guess what? Your company or service will be also. So email us for a complete deck at What Women Want Show at gmail.com, and someone from our team will get right back to you. I'm here with Kristen West, my co-host, and I'm very, very happy because it's her one-year anniversary. And you know what, Kristen, it's funny because I feel like you've been with me like from the beginning. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to believe that it's one year, um, but I'm so blessed to have you on the show. I saw that on my Facebook feed. You know how Facebook you know, gives you your memories? And I went, has it been a year? Oh my goodness, it feels like it has been a long time, but you know, I consider you a friend and we get along so well and we have such great conversations that it's it's just amazing and I, I really thank you for letting me be part of your show. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. And and that's true. We have so much fun on this show, no matter where any of you listening out there are or what you're doing, we know you will enjoy our show with conversation that feeds your mind, energizes your spirit and even makes you laugh once in a while. Kristen, we're talking about pot tonight. Not a laughing matter, though. Or I guess it could be, right? But (laughs) I'm sorry, that's a bad joke. It's hard to believe after being raised not to smoke pot or even practically look at it that we're bringing this topic on air this evening. But after speaking to our guests and doing some research, I realized that we need to clear up a lot of misnomers of marijuana as well as the cannabis industry itself. It's growing exponentially, no pun intended, and it's not going away. And so this broadcast is to bring more awareness as to what is happening from the industry insiders and how people are reacting to legalization, which may surprise you, the reactions. You know, it, it's true. Cal- in California, it just became legal for recreational use on the first, and then there's some bills going through Congress right now today, which is really changing how people feel about pot, how people think about pot. And I'm so excited to have our guests on later tonight to talk about that. And you are right. It's surprising to have a a broadcast like this at this time. And, you know, I remember growing up and, you know, just say no. Well, you know, it's not always for pot now, I guess, now either. You don't have to say no anymore. You don't have to say no anymore. (laughs) If you're in a legal state, if you're still not in a legal state, be careful you know, until yeah, the federal well, law there's clears so many it up. controversies about it, and that's why exactly why I had the show um, because I was really surprised when I talked to people who worked within the industry. You know what exactly is going on and and how the growth is is becoming so huge um, that you know no one's going going to be able to ignore it after a while. So my background comes from the fashion and publishing world. So I was a high fashion model with Ford New York before becoming a magazine editor. Then I couldn't stay away from the front of the camera and became a TV host for Better TV, City Buzz, and a few other shows. And now I'm a regular contributor on NBC and Fox. I founded the company What Women Want Networking seven years ago, whatwomenwantnetworking.com. Excuse me. And we have several regional chapters spanning from coast to coast. Our second national conference coming up October 19th through 21. 19th through 21, Kristen, save the date. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> love, oh my gosh, I would love for you to come back and co-host it with me again. And it's in Atlanta. And I'm also a St. Martin's Press author and the mom of teenage twin girls. So Kristen, I'm babbling on and on about me. What's <laughs> going on with you? Oh, interesting stuff. You know, like I said in past episodes, once we rang in the new year, there was this flurry of activity. I'm hosting Horror Talk with Kristen West now, and it's available on YouTube and on Domain of Horror, which is a horror fan site. And The Lich, which is a horror comedy, is coming out later this year. And I'm sure uh, James Balsama, who directs that, um, that would be a good uh, 
movie to watch while you're partaking of pot. It's funny. Um, <laughs> it's one of those kind of if movies. If you're in California. I'm in California. So if you're in California and you want to watch a good horror comedy that you can enjoy your cannabis with, your cannabis product with, go see The Lich when it comes out. And Hell's Kitty also coming out soon. And The Spirit Room which is a short film, is now in festivals. It just won its first award. And, of course, I'm here every week and enjoying my time with you. So that's what's going on with me. And and she didn't, and she failed to mention that she's an award-winning actress, producer, and screenwriter. So many talents in there in all those movies and projects that you're doing. And I took the liberty of, you know researching this topic this evening and smoked a joint before we came on air just to get every angle <laughs> research intense research right judy oh uh, geez you know i'm in new york i shouldn't say that no i'm just kidding but honestly as many jokes as i'm making about the industry this is a show that's really going to fill you in on a lot of details about what's going on we first we have guest leah hayes she's a former regulatory compliance attorney who found her way to the cannabis industry upon a recommendation from her doctor that medical cannabis may be able to help her deal with the pain from an extremely painful, incurable disease called chronic pancreatitis. I hope I said that right. Leah is currently the chief experience officer for Forefront Advisors and is in the process of opening medical cannabis dispensaries in Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts. As CXO, Leah is responsible for ensuring that patients and employees have a good experience when connecting with the brand. They couldn't have picked a better choice for that role. Welcome to the show, Leah. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So tell us, Leah, what exactly Forefront Advisors is. Forefront Advisors is a company that is one of the originals of the cannabis industry. They've been in business for since 2011. They initially started as an advisor company, and they were management consultants that would help people apply for grow process and dispense licenses in each state that was medically legal. Um, and they have won over 50 licenses around the United States. And a few years ago, they decided that instead of just focusing on drafting applications and consulting and helping people get their own dispensaries and cultivation centers and processing centers up and running, that they themselves would form a company um, called Mission and that they would own those particular dispensaries, uh, cultivations and processing facilities. So we are in the process of creating brands of processing, cultivation and dispensing um, in a variety of states, as well as uh, rolling out a bunch of product lines. So they were one of the first in this industry? They were. Um, and Chris Crane, who is the head of Forefront, um, was one of the original founders of a nonprofit organization called Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Um, and was the executive director of that group for a number of years before leaving there to go and work for Harborside, which is one of the first dispensaries in California and probably the one of the most well-known um, dispensaries in the United States. And then he formed Forefront after that. So tell us so a little bit of years. Okay, yeah. So, so I know that, well, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that marijuana has only started becoming legalized about five years ago, correct? In California, it's been medically legal for decades. Um, uh, California was the forerunner of all of the legalized cannabis in the United States. And then um, several states started to go recreationally legal as well. I think Denver was one of the first. So or not Denver, but Colorado. Okay, so somewhere I read that it was about five years ago. So this has been going on for a while. Um, I'm just wondering what what kind of rollout it is with the medical, you know, uh, cannabis industry and the recreational. What's the percentage there? What are we trying to push for? Um, I know that there are issues with the federal government and this getting involved with the state governments. Can you just kind of give us an overview of, of what's happening right now in the industry as sure. far as the growth? Um, yep. Sure. On the federal level, it is illegal um, 
cannabis is a controlled substance. It's uh, Schedule One. It's a Schedule One drug, so therefore it is illegal to consume cannabis in the United States um, according to federal law. What that ha- what has happened then is on a state level, individual states have created a framework of laws where either it is medically legal to consume cannabis in the state or recreationally legal to consume cannabis in the state or in some states they have both a medical program and a recreational program and they normally term term it adult use um right now there are more than i think there's eight states where it's recreationally legal in the united states vermont is currently pending i think new jersey will probably go adult use this year as well maryland continues to put it on the ballot I think that we're going to see a number of states become adult use this year, even with the uh, actions that have happened most recently by Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General of the United States, where he retracted a key piece of policy that allowed for any states that were having businesses that were medically legal would not face federal enforcement he retracted that memo but even with that memo's retraction i don't think that you're going to put this genie back in the bottle well that's funny because that was one of my my questions so the u.s attorney general jeff sessions you know retracted an order from obama right that basically makes it easier for the states that are medically legalized to get around the rules in, in a manner of speaking right not get around the rules so much, but what it said was that it would not be a prosecutorial um, Get around the rules. Okay, so for us (laughs) that we're not in the industry, (laughs) I mean it's a way of of not coming down on on that industry so hard when, you know, they can't really find a way or they make it harder to find ways to crack down on the states that are doing it. And, And they retracted that now. So what kind of effect is that going to have, or is it going to have an effect right away? You know that 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 Mr. Sessions, Attorney General Sessions, I don't know what you call him, but what, is it going to have any direct effect on the people that are using it now, or the dispensaries, or or anyone who's involved in that industry in the legalized form? So I think it has had some chilling effect uh, in terms of capital investments into the industry right now. Um, we in the industry are currently on waiting with bated breath to find out what Congress is going to do, whether or not they're going to extend the Warback or Blumenauer Amendment, which is an amendment that essentially did what the Cole Memo said, which was we're not going to give the federal government any money to enforce a law against a state that has medical cannabis in place under a robust regulatory framework inside the state. So as long as the Congress continues with that at, at a minimum, then we should be okay in operating as usual. Oh, I know what I saw. Recreational marijuana wasn't legal anywhere in the United States five years ago. Is that true? Uh, yeah, or that do you is know? true. Yeah, okay. That's what I saw with the five years. I was like, I know I saw something. <laughs> okay, I know my co-host has some questions about this too. Kristen, you want to jump in? I do. Um, Now, Leah, is it true, because of the tension between the federal government and the state governments, is it true that dispensaries are cash businesses, meaning they can't have a bank account because of the banking laws? So there are a number of different types of cash options that... um, that dispensaries use. And there are also banks that will bank money in the cannabis industry. What tends to happen is that the fees to have a checking account are much higher than you would expect. I mean, over $2,000 a month just to have a checking account so that you can pay your bills. Um, But most dispensaries that I know operate solely in cash because they don't want to run afoul of money laundering laws. I see. Uh, I had actually had a, a friend that was in the business, uh, in, in the cannabis business. I didn't quite remember what she did, but she did mention to me that she, her particular business was a cash-only business because of the banking laws. Now, you don't necessarily have to grow cannabis or have to have a dispensary, though, to be part of this emerging pot economy, do you? What, what other services are people providing? 
Um, if you can imagine that this is an industry that is just like the dot-com industry and the dot-com industry that was serviced by staffing companies and attorneys and accountants and brand managers and advertisers and publicists and people that did videography, pretty much any type of ancillary service company or um, business that's not actually touching the plant that is utilized to create a more robust business is the potential position that you could use in the cannabis industry. And when I talk to people about entering into the cannabis industry, I always talk to them about what are their particular interests. If they are currently a PR person, they don't have to come into the cannabis industry and learn how to grow cannabis. They can take that skill set, that very valuable skill set, and help take a brand to be international by using their public relations skills. So people out there that are looking for jobs or looking to leave your job, there are endless openings in every kind of, I guess, genre, you would say, in the cannabis industry. That's what it sounds like. Every, absolutely, every genre. And I think you have to be a little risk, um, willing to take risks because of the potential that your business could be shut down. And I think that if you are very interested in being an entrepreneur, the cannabis industry is the perfect place for you. There is going to be huge growth in tech, um, huge growth in different types of software platforms, staffing companies. There's needs everywhere I turn, there is a hole to be plugged. And there's someone out there that can do it. So I think Judy is a psychic because she scheduled this topic for today. <laughs> and all of a sudden, in the middle of the afternoon, about about two or three hours ago, uh, Cory Booker uh, unveiled, Senator Cory Booker unveiled the Marijuana Justice Act. And that's, that's removing marijuana from the Controlled Substances Act and ending the federal prohibition of marijuana. Um, first off... Uh, preventing deportations of individuals for marijuana offenses, um, expungement of marijuana offenses at the federal level, um, a process of resentencing for marijuana offenses also at the federal level, um, uh, cutting funding for state law enforcement and prison construction if a state disproportionately arrests or incarcerates low-income individuals, among many other provisions, and also creating a community reinvestment fund of $500 million to invest in communities that are most impacted by the war on drugs and providing those people job training, reentry, community centers, and more. What? How do you feel about this? What do you think about this bill? I'm thrilled. I'm, I think Cory Booker is an amazing advocate for our, for our industry. He's been behind our industry for a number of years. Um, he is incredibly vocal right now. I think that Sessions' retraction of the poll memo probably helped to really prod Congress to take action that they probably weren't quite ready to take. Um, and we may actually see some success with this bill, which I like. I also really like that Included within this bill are some reparations for those individuals that have been damaged by the war on drugs. The number of people that are incarcerated in the United States for possession of fairly small portions or limits of cannabis in the United States right now and are spending decades in prison for those small possessions is just unbelievable. We have absolutely overcrowded our posi- uh, prison. And, and it looks like Andrew Cuomo from New York, too, is jumping on the bandwagon. Before we get off the subject of this federal legislation that was, you know, um, put into action today, I have to ask, is, is it realistic for the federal government to legalize marijuana across the board nationwide? Uh before all of the states do state by state? I mean, is that really good? Would something like that really happen that fast? Or is it just really kind of a publicity move to, to get awareness? I mean, I can't imagine what we'll have to go through to, to have something like that happen. But it feels like the states individually are coming through one after the other much quicker. No? 
I think we've reached the tipping point. And I think if you look back to prohibition generally from way back in the 20s when alcohol prohibition occurred, once you reached a certain number of states, I think it was 26 states that had individually decided on their own that they were going to get rid of alcohol prohibition. Um, that was when the federal government finally said, okay, we have have enough states that are going this opposite direction that we now need to act. And I think we are there. 44 states in the United States have some type of cannabis laws on their books, whether it just be a CBD only product that's allowed or a medical product or adult use we are seeing um, marked approval rating for the use of medical cannabis in particular. In fact, I think the most recent approval rating I saw was 90%. That's incredibly high. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Um, Now let's talk about medical use really quick because you have experience with this. You had chronic pancreatitis. You were using opioids to control the pain of that. It is is cannabis the answer to the opioid epidemic? What we're seeing? I I'm not sure if it's 100% the answer because I never because we don't have enough studies to determine whether or not it will be the exact answer. Um, but personally for myself and for many others I know, I really think that cannabis is a valuable tool to be used in the arsenal to help someone withdraw from opiate addiction. Um, I also think that given the fact that the cannabis does not attach to any receptor in your brain where it reduces respiration, unlike opiates, you cannot die from an overdose of cannabis, unlike dying from an opiate overdose. See, this is why I wanted to have the show, because I knew that you'd bring us into all of these, you know, facts and and mind boggling from, you know, Congress, uh, you know, uh, putting trying to put through legalization through Congress and, and to, you know, things that I don't even know how to say it, but just really blowing the lid off of all the misnomers and and everything that everybody thinks about the industry and and when i spoke to you the first time i thought oh my gosh <laughs> this really <laughs> this really needs you know whether you're for it or not you really need to know a lot of what you're saying today you know about what's going on right now because it's happening very very quickly and and there are so many things that we need to know honestly there's more to it than drugs are bad and just say no we really yeah, have to unpack it. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm saying, it. and that's how I was raised. Yeah, and that, it's just... yeah, that was the mantra of my of my K through 12 education when it came to talking about these things. Was drugs are bad, just say no. They're all the same. Marijuana is a gateway drug, and of course, there are right rightly there are studies that actually disprove that. Yeah, and I even found research pointing to children, you know, using this at, at helping with seizures and PTSD and all kinds of things, too. So there are so many sides to the story, and I just don't think we've been, you know, talking about it enough. So I'm hoping that this awareness changes things. I hope so, too. And I really believe that education is the key to all of this. Um, we spent almost 100 years of educating ourselves against this plant and I think now we have to learn to re-educate ourselves and change that stigma and things change and opinions change and new research comes to light and we have to allow ourselves to look at new research and see what particular health benefits are of anything that we're doing in our life. I mean you know, 10 years ago, you heard you had to eat a low-fat diet. Now, not so much the low-fat diet. Well, Leah, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and really giving us an education about, you know, all angles of the industry. And I'm sure we could probably talk about another hour and a half <laughs> about this. It was actually hard for me to really narrow down you know what points to hit because there's so much going on and and we really appreciate you coming on the show how can people get a hold of you or or what website do you want to point them to for more information about this you can go to www.forefrontadvisors.com and there's a lot of good research and lists of um, 
medical studies and things that if people are interested in learning more about it. And then keep your eye out for mission uh, partners because we will be opening dispensaries and cultivation centers and processors in a state near you. And we currently have one mission dispensary that is open in Chicago and it was just uh, nominated by Leafly as one of the best patient services centers in the country. Well, congratulations. That's excellent. So it's for the number four front advisors. And, you know, everyone who's listening, this isn't a push on necessarily, you know, promoting the cannabis industry or that type of thing. But I just want people to be open and aware and educated, like Leah said, and really look into it and and keep on top of what's happening. Because, you know, from people looking to jobs to, to the federal government, maybe legalizing, you know, marijuana nationwide, we really need to be up on these things. Thank you, Leah, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Kristen, you want to bring on our next guest? I do. Who is going to be just as fascinating. I can't wait to hear what she has to say. I know. Author, speaker, instigator, Shearer Adler is a media wellness personality known for having, quote, a throat chakra with no off switch. Shearer's journey as a as a debut mom on Bravo's Extreme Guide to Parenting to becoming the pot mom is fascinating, inspiring, and compelling. Shira's new book, The ABCs of CBD, The Essential Guide for Parents and Regular Folks Too, is now available on Amazon and is being hailed as the one book essential for anyone who wants to learn why pot is not what we were taught. So from Shira's book, it says, once you read this book, you'll understand why the typical stoner mental image is nothing to fear. Welcome to the show, Shira. How are you? Hi, ladies. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we're glad to have you, especially on this day of days. How do you feel about this new bill, Shira? I am so thrilled. And can I say, you two are literally the coolest podcast that I know of. And, <laughs> and I've known Judy for years, but Kristen, I love you too. My daughter's an actress and she specializes in horror. So you guys just rock. And Leah is one of my favorite cannabis community expert. She is the former CEO of Women Grow, and I'm a member of the Women Grow New York City chapter. So thrilling for me to even hear her. And today is, as you said, a really fantastic day. I was just posting on my Facebook and my group, I have a Facebook group called the ABCs of CBD, how Congresswoman Lee, who is in California, is my new Shiro because she is one of the main supporters of this uh, HR 4779. And that's really going to take what Jeff Sessions tried and turn it on its ear. It's interesting what uh, it's the the various facets of the bill are interesting, and I'm glad that we could have you in the same airwaves as as Leah. Now, you were not always a fan of pot, is that correct? Yeah, that's actually really where I come from, and why people find me quote relatable, and it's how I want to serve because I want to look at any parent and have that conversation and say, I get it. I was raised just like Judy was, just like we all were. You know, we're the Gen Xers. We're the sandwich generation between the aging baby boomer and the parents who are suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia to we have the millennials and dysregulated teens and kids with autism and ADHD. And it's really hard to be who we are and then have the guts to say, oh, my gosh, I was wrong. What we were taught was incorrect. It was based on misinformation. It was based on, as Leah mentioned, you know, almost a hundred years of basically a propaganda schmear campaign Mm -hmm. that was started by William Randolph Hearst when he decided, because he was that big media mogul and had all those newspapers, and he started using his papers, because don't forget, papers rely on timber, right, right. right, for paper. And what's the biggest competitor to paper? Hemp. Hemp. Yep. Natural fiber, right? So all of a sudden he took... And that's really where this started. And people don't know that unless they read my book, because I do happen to have the world history of candid cannabis and happy hemp history. Because it was a and major crop, like back, you yeah. know, back before before the early 1900s. This was a major U.S. crop. It probably even more so, I would think, than cotton and and corn. It was right up there, and then it just disappears off the radar. But you had personal Absolutely. reasons. Your mother was anti-pot, and did is it true you also right. divorced a husband because he used too much pot? I actually did, yeah. And then don't ask me which husband, because I've had more than Imelda Marcos used to have shoes, but that's <laughs> another topic for another show. Well, she's so, a lovely yeah, lady, so. 
<laughs> Lots of shoes, <laughs> exactly. lovely lady. There we go. <laughs> but that was just to prove the point. And it's really legitimate. You know, we were raised to believe, and we don't know what we don't know. So I'm just like any. Well, I'm wondering what else I don't know. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> well, we can get into that on another episode. But it is true. You know, most of us, most of the people I speak with on a daily basis who reach out to me and they're like, sure, I'm afraid. I, I'm uncomfortable. Mm. I'm nervous. I don't know enough. I'm curious. You know, that's why I say we're can of curious parents. We can all come curious. from that same background. Unless you had a very expansive thinking kind of uh, parenting and my dad was an early neuroscientist. He was involved uh, in Berkeley back in the day with LSD experiments and all of that. But I was still raised very conservatively, very traditionally. I was very anti-pot. And when I had a husband who was basically a complete pothead, um, I blamed that on his lack of connection. And really, it's the personality. It's not the product. It wasn't about that. But it seemed obvious to me. And at the time, those were the choices that I made. Well, I love this idea of being kind of curious. So how did you get kind of curious? Well, what happened is uh, the other part of my career, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a, like I said, a throat chakra with no off switch. I'm a, I'm a mutt. I have a lot of different um, experience as clergy and as a cantor in Jewish synagogues. And basically, I was invited in to sharing the most intimate experiences of people's lives. And that was their birth, the coming of age, uh, unions, end of life, and especially times of illness and tragedy and trauma and families. And it wasn't just those experiences, but that of being a single self-employed mom, you know, raising my own two very out-of-the-box kids who seemed to need something else, something different, something better. And like a lot of parents, I tried traditional medication. I went down that road. It didn't work. It didn't make sense. It caused more problems than not. And when I took a step back and I realized, you know what, there's something not right here. Just You know how you feel it in your gut? Yeah. Something didn't make sense. As a population in the world, we're over-medicated, we're underserved, the kids have side effects, they're struggling, they're overstimulated. Yeah. It just felt like... So you lit up a joint there? one day and you, you lit up a joint one day, is that how it happened? <laughs> Or, or did I wasn't get... quite ready to do the joint, which is so funny because I was always, that, again, the typical mom of don't smoke. And, and yet I found, you know, my teens did try pot. And the whole thing about, oh, it's a gateway drug. You know, sure, I was told the same thing. It is not. It's actually an exit strategy for people who do struggle with addiction or, or want to self-medicate. And you, you find me a teenager today that is not going to self-medicate in some way, whether it's screens, you know, mm -hmm. how much time they're on their phone, social media obsession, video games. There are lots of ways for people to disconnect and tune out and lose themselves and not be integrated in balance. I have but never CBD, heard what you said before about it being an exit strategy. You are so... Oh, yeah compelling about that because people people don't think about you know we were we were t we talk a lot on the show about distraction and tuning out and being over focused or not focused enough we spend a lot of time kind of parceling out what happens in our headspace but i've never thought of it as an exit strategy that is so I wish I could interesting say that i came up with that phrase but i i read that in some of the research i was doing for my book and it is true there are actually in california there are treatment centers for opioid addicts and addicts of any nature, and they use cannabis to wean addictions. Uh, and I have seen it, and I actually have a company that is, I'm both the author and educator, but I also do have a consumer products company that's a beautiful, really complex, enzymatically rich industrial hemp CBD. So I'm legal, I'm kosher, I'm clean, it's all good. Wow. But, you know, I use that to get my own kids off medication. I use that to stop my dog from having seizures. I use that to get myself out of early perimenopause, and that's a whole other fun ball game to talk about. Well, it's interesting but you mentioned the pets because people forget the pets in this conversation is that there are cannabis products for pets. And I want to get in with you on sort of how, you know, like like we've been talking about this this whole show, this whole topic is our, our dialogue about this has been very simplistic. Drugs are bad. Just say no. But actually, cannabinoids, as they're called, are part of the way the body works. Is that right? The endocannabinoid system? Exactly. And so speaking about why would it work on a dog and it would work on the mom and it would work on the, the grandparent with Alzheimer's, it's the same ingredient. So what is that about? And basically, 
every living human being and every you know and species of uh, you know from the animal kingdom, we all have an endocannabinoid receptor system. We're all wired with the same basic system that we were never even taught about. I mean, remember in school in biology, we know the respiratory system and the muscular and the you know the hormone and the endocrine and blah blah blah. But nobody ever mentioned the endocrine, uh, sorry, the endocannabinoid receptors. So when you support the endocannabinoid system in your own body, what you're doing is creating a state of homeostasis, of balance, of take those inflammatory responses, because the number one shared symptomology of every underlying issue, condition, challenge is inflammation. CBD is an anti-inflammatory, but it has no side effects and it has no contraindication, which is huge. I mean, that's a really important point. Well, you know, and here's the thing, and you are exactly right. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I took AP biology when I was in high school, and I paid attention, even though I made a B. Um, I, took, <laughs> I took biology in college, and I paid attention, and I made an A. But I had never heard of the endocannabinoid system until... I read it. I read about it on your website. That's just that's just amazing. Now you don't have to smoke necessarily to get the benefits of of uh, cannabinoids, though. There are there are other ways. You have sprays, right? You make sprays. Is that correct? Yeah, I started with because it's an unfamiliar subject. Because you know people are cool with my being that out there mom. They know that I'll kind of go one step further than maybe what other people's comfort levels are. I have but a feeling you know. don't let them have a choice. <laughs> no, I kind of don't. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, I'm going. I'll, I'll test it out. I'll let you know how it works out. You know, I am that person. But I started with, um, before I knew about CBD, I did have an aromatherapy line, which I love. And, you know, they balance and they integrate and they soothe and they uplift and they're just, I love aromatherapy. It's awesome sauce, you know. And I infused them because I was looking to add a level of complexity and support for the body and the mind-body-spirit balance. And I found that CBD was the perfect, because it's both all about the plant-based medicine and ingredients. We're talking terpenes, you know, the things that make a plant smell like pine and citrus and lemon and all of those elements. Those are, those are terpenes. And if you mix CBD which is, you know, the cannabinoids, those are all about the terpenes, and you blend it with aromatherapy, it was kind of a no-brainer. Plus, people are comfortable using it. It's a good entry point to a system or an ingredient that you're not familiar with that you know is safe and gentle and loving and can do no harm. And from there, at least then we can have the conversation. You can take that baby step, and you can get into what might be more necessary depending on who you are what's your diagnosis code, issue, challenge, checkbox, I don't care, whatever you want to, whatever language you want to use. And then you can get into tinctures. You can take a capsule. You can mm-hmm. use, you know, I have a body butter that's like... A body awesome. butter? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That sounds luxurious. <laughs> it's kind of seriously luxurious. I love it more than life itself. On days where I have a headache, mm-hmm. I just rub some in my temples, back of my neck, and you know, a sore joint, whatever. I got to get amazing. on over to Shira's house. You do. Well, let <laughs> me ask you something, because you're making these products. If we, if people are interested in taking the baby set step, as you call it, tiptoeing in there, is there any kind of labeling that we should look for when we're, when we're trying out a, a cannabinoid kind of product? Yes. You know, that's actually one of the interesting points, and it's why I wrote, because to me it's not just about having great stuff to give to people it's about educating them so that they know what i know to me that's really how we serve humanity we share of who we are and what we know and there's a lot to know this industry is new it's of course blossoming as we can all see and and i hope it continues especially in terms of the social stigma and the social justice aspects but you do need to know where you're getting the cbd from is it really legal tested certified pure you know the thing about cbd it comes from cannabis or hemp right okay. those plants have uh, what's called the remediation plants they absorb things through the root system so one of the big problems i have personally mm-hmm. is you better know who's growing your stuff and how it's extracted and all of that because you're talking pesticides and if they absorb pesticides then you're also going to be ingesting pesticides and so we can't get it off from a guy from the street I would not recommend that, no. <laughs> well, you're so- How do you know that someone is 
making this or, or putting it together in the right way. You said they have to be legitimate. What, how do you find someone like that, or what's what's the process there? If anybody, honestly, I am happy to be that connected. I know so many people in this industry. I have researched so many companies. If somebody has a concern, if they're not sure what they're looking at on a website or they have a question, just drop me a note and private message me, and I am really here to help and to serve and to say, make sure you look for this, make sure you look for that. It does. It is all covered in the book about what to look for, what to know, what extraction methods exist. And it's not just the extraction method, it's who's doing the machinery. It's literally the expertise of the person running it. A you really the are the pot mom, aren't you? I kind of am now, yeah. I went from anti-pot to the pot mom. It, it's so let me ask journey. you something. And with the stigma of marijuana and cannabis and all of those words, I mean, I was even wondering, this is stepping a little out of my comfort zone to even have this subject on the show. Um, and sure. I just can't imagine... You know, I, and I and I threw it out in front of my kids. My my daughters are are thirteen years old. I have thirteen year old twins, as you both know. And I threw it out in front of them a couple of times, and, and they didn't really react to it. They were just like, "Yeah, whatever. Okay, she's having a show on pot." And <laughs> I suppose that the how they're growing up is is a lot more open than how you know we grew up, or at least I grew up. There wasn't the internet. We couldn't. We didn't see certain things until a certain point, and we couldn't just research anything. So. The fact that it's being legalized is, is how they're growing up. So it's a very open dialogue. Right. But is it's there, what about the, world. I want to know about the other moms. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I want to so know funny? how you deal with it. I mean, it's yeah. funny because ever since I've kind of started posting, I think we got the biggest reaction to this show than we have in a long time. And people were very, you know, encouraging and, and excited and, and and wanting to know more about it. I got a couple of, you know, comments that were like, oh, God, you know, what is she doing type of thing. But I know, yeah, I, I know. can't imagine I like me, the I know it. And moms. I'm still clergy, by the way. It's it's pretty crazy because I just got invited. I'm the assistant. Yeah, you were like God way on the other end. You can't get as far as, as a different career than, than the pot mom. The cancer. Exactly. <laughs> but that's the point of the world that we live in today. It's a yes and conversation. You can be a conservative, very mindful parent. You can be uncomfortable and not yet ready to, or maybe there's no reason for you to actually smoke pot. Fine, you be you. But let's let well, I didn't say there wasn't a reason, but I. <laughs> well, exactly. I, or maybe you're just I'm not little, ready yet. Yeah, in it's fact, just. I mean, I it's a weird it. thing That's to be talking fine. about. I be I got to be honest with you on a, on a on a show that has thousands of listeners and and you know that type of thing. But there are a lot of things here that people really need to know, and obviously that's right why you wrote your book. Right, and truthfully, what I want people to consider is that we've been given a lot of misinformation, and I mean a lot. And the stigma against and the prohibition against pot has always been institutional racism since the beginning, and it has continued to this day, as Leah was mentioning, with the, with the really shocking number. When you start to read this book, and, and I'll show you the statistics, you're gonna, your mind is going to be blown. And again, we don't know what we don't know. So it does start to make you think differently. When you start to think differently, you can open your mind, you can relax a little, you can trust that some of where your comfort zone was and what held you back actually doesn't need to hold you back. And it's not an invitation for everyone to go out and just rush out to the nearest dispensary and first of all, you know, or rec state. Um, but it is a conversation to say, if we were wrong and if this can help people and it has no side effects and there are no contraindications and it is plant-based medicine and, 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 all of a sudden, we're really changing consciousness here. And that's the most important aspect. I do have moms on the other side who say, you know, smoking a joint once in a while makes me a better mom. It takes the stress away. I'm not impaired. I'm at home. You know, what's the worst thing that's ever happened to someone because they smoke pot? They get the munchies. They chill out. They become expansive thinkers. You know, really, if you think of the mentality and the culture versus alcohol. Why is alcohol okay for legal adults, anyone 21 and older? There are no date rapes because of marijuana. There are no car accident fatalities because of marijuana. It just doesn't exist. The stats are there. So we really have to take a good hard look about what we accept and why we've been accepting it for so long and maybe say, wow, what if? What if we were wrong? I want to bring up something on the heels of that because I think it is important to mention when you are shopping for cannabinoids, you really want the plant-based 
thing. You want the real thing. You don't want the synthetics because... Absolutely. Because In my opinion, yes. I totally agree with that. And I do write about some of the industry. And, and who's doing what research and what companies are doing what. Because, again, you as an advocate, as, a, as an inadvertent advocate, mm-hmm. or just as a parent or a potential consumer, it is your job to know who's doing what and why. It's just no longer status quo to say, oh, I trust our government. No offense, but come on. You know, we're not there anymore. Or I can't even trust fully our medical practitioners because they're lovely human beings but they're over inundated in our system they don't know they don't read package inserts they're not educated there's no plant-based alternative or integrative medical training as part of the standard american medical training for doctors they can't help that and it's fine but they're kind of curious too in fact i now work and consult with a couple of fantastic practitioners in my area northern westchester county of new york you know there's Dr. Lynn Parodnik, who certifies people mm-hmm. if you have one of the qualifying conditions in New York. You know, just right. ask questions, be curious, be open-minded, read the book, Keep and let's reading. just chat. Let's share our yeah. stories. Let's really share our experiences and be well, there for each other the reason, without judgment. Well, the reason I, I brought up the synthetics in particular is because I know that there's going to be a rush of interest, and mm-hmm. the synthetics are considered design, what are called designer drugs. And yeah. um, they are illegal. Just because cannabis is legal in some states does not mean that the synthetic cannabinoids are legal. So read your packaging. Please do your homework, everyone. Public service announcement from Kristen and Shira here. Um, Absolutely. Kristen, right. You're so right about that because yeah. there are two versions of synthetics people need to look for. There's the rec side, the mm-hmm. synthetic weed or the weed, the fake weed, mm-hmm. right, that I talked about in the book as well. Uh, and there's also crate. I mean, there are definitely some problems because those strains and those chemicals are manufactured and processed in a way to create an addiction that would not normally exist like right. anything else. If you want a high, you want it to be the best, strongest, deepest. That's not natural cannabis. Right. Right. In fact, CBD was originally called hippies disappointment because when you have a high level or ratio or strain that's high CBD, low THC, let's say in medical marijuana, Mm -hmm. the ratio is all about what condition it's for. Right. And why you need it in proportion to what it does. And the THC driver creates an entourage effect for the for the C B D. But synthetic C B D I also have a problem with. To me that's like a GMO. It, it's the same issue. It's um, well, rushing Shira, to market with something for money instead of what really works. Well, Shara, here's the thing. I, I know we're going to need another show for this probably in six months, <laughs> three months, when, or when the bill, it, whatever happens with this bill. You know, folks, get in touch with Shira if you have questions. Let's keep this dialogue going on YouTube once the video is up. Comment, share your thoughts, your concerns, your impressions, your opinions. We want that. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Shira, how can people keep in touch with you after the show today? Uh, How do we find you online? Oh, that's great. Thanks for asking that. Well, you can get the book right away, Kindle or or, um, Piperback on Amazon. It's the ABCs of CBD. And you can find me on Shira at com, S-H-I-R-A-A-D-L-E-R.com. That's my main website. My company is shirasynergy.com. And I'm all over social at the one Shira Adler. So it's T-H-E, the number one, and my name spelled out. So at the one Shira Adler. And just find me any old way that you wish, but absolutely, I'm, I'm so honored to be a part of this moment that's becoming a movement. It already is a movement. And well, really we're so honored. Together, we're, so, we're so honored to have you, and thank you so much for coming on. Folks, like I said, let, let's keep this conversation going after we stop our, our show today. And, and, and ladies, subscribe to us on YouTube. Don't miss one show. Go to whatwomenwantradio.com for more information, and see you next week. And everyone, have a great night. You're listening to What Women Want with Judy Goss and Kristen West, only on L.A. Talk Radio.